Welcome into hour number two right here on the early line. Sirius XM channel 159 right here on the grid. Joe Ranieri, Donnie Wright, out on a Wednesday morning, closing out this Major League Baseball card with a few games. Then we start talking about this week's NFL action and college football. So let's begin here. Just because they're bad baseball teams, Joe, doesn't mean you just discard these games and throw them out. If you feel you can make some money, Press that lever and get involved. Let's take a look. 967, 968, 805 first pitch tonight. That's between the Los Angeles Angels and the Texas Rangers. Davidson, the lefty, versus Dunning, the righty. And how about this? A minus 148 favorite here for those Texas Rangers. A total that opened up at nine, now shifting down to eight and a half. And for myself, two bad baseball teams. I think we're going to get some runs tonight. I'm leading on that over eight and a half at the FanDuel Sportsbook here tonight, Joe. Yeah, listen, there is, uh, there, this is totally about uh, positioning. Third place is up for grabs. I can't even, I'm laughing as <laughs> yeah. I say it. But the uh-huh. reality is that's the motivation right now. I mean, nobody wants to finish uh, near the bottom there. So third place is what is up here between these two teams. Um, I think the Rangers hold this season edge uh, right now, but the Angels... Listen, they've been playing better as of uh, as of late. You still got Trout. You still got. Uh, it's just so hard for me to believe that this team is as bad as they have been. I really thought maybe, just maybe, we'd get to see Trout uh, battling down the stretch for a postseason. Him and Otani. I mean, is there anything better, Donnie? Yeah, no, ain't gonna happen. They should trade everybody in the offseason and start from scratch here. Uh, but hey, I'm uh, I'm all for the home team here tonight. I thought Texas would get it done last night. It didn't. Uh, Dunning here tonight. Uh, I'm going to go with him here, and hopefully uh, the Rangers can score more runs than the Angels, who are going to strike out here a little bit tonight. Yeah, take a look at that, too, in the offseason for the Angels. New ownership, new players. We'll mm-hmm. find it all out. Quickly here on this game, uh, Dunning has a 5.21 XFIP over the past 30 days. But the interesting yep. part tonight, the anticipated lineup tonight for the Angels has one, two, three, four, five, as many as six left-handed batters. Here's why this plays in. Yep. Dunning's a right-handed pitcher. He's really struggled, Joe. 78 batters from the right-hand side, a 498 weighted on base percentage, and an ISO of 333. But he's actually been very good versus left-handed batters to the tune of a 269 weighted on base percentage and an ISO of 135. So actually the Angels lineup is going towards the strength of Dunning as opposed to vice versa mm-hmm. where you probably want to line up all those right-handed batters. Now if we take a look at Davidson, the lefty on the mound, a 6.47 XFIP mm-hmm. over the past 30 days. Lefty and righty batters hitting him up nice. So we'll see how yeah. that holds up here to see if we can get some runs in this game tonight. Moving forward, Cleveland and the Chicago White Sox doing it once again here. Maybe we'll have a close game, maybe an extra inning game. Maybe the White Sox will finally fall out of it. But I got to tell you, looking at this game, 971-972 on the rotation, McKenzie and Lynn, I'm actually mm-hmm. leaning towards the White Sox in this game today, Joe, at a minus 132 price. I, it's so hard to back the White Sox on uh, on yeah. anything. I, I'm kind of with you. The Guardians uh, smelt uh, blood in the water last night. And they went for it, and they got it. Uh, And how many more times this year, Donnie, do we have to put our money on the White Sox, Mm -hmm. expecting them to be better than what they are, and what do they end up doing? Not being better than what they are. So uh, it's very, very hard for me to go there. I do think, although Lance Lynn has been uh, pretty decent here against uh, the Guardians over time, but to me, it's Guardians or not here. It's very hard. To back the White Sox yeah, anymore. It, you're right, though. It is hard to trust the White Sox as we welcome in the radio audience here on a Wednesday morning, right here on the grid. The early line series section channel 159. Joe Ranieri, Donnie, right side here, going through our final bits of this Major League Baseball card in hour number two before we kick it off for some football action. How about a possibility of an under in this game, Joe? 959, Ooh. 960, 940 first pitch. Michaelis versus Snell, the lefty. If we take a look at the FanDuel mm-hmm. Sportsbook, seven and a half as a total. Slight favorite here towards San Diego at a minus 124. We know the St. Louis Cardinals are in. The Padres fighting to stay in that upper level here of the wild card race. What are some thoughts then, between Michaelis and Snell out in San Diego? Yeah, runs. Uh, that's what uh, comes to mind ah. here. Um, even though the Cardinals didn't get any last night, um, Snell has uh, been surprising uh, this year for a lot. Usually we mm-hmm. figure he gets the four or five innings and then bye-bye. 
Uh, that'll be it. He usually throws way too many pitches, walks too many guys, but he's actually been uh, pretty darn good here this year. Miklas is... He started out for really hot. Remember that, Donnie, in the beginning of the year? Everyone yeah. kept waiting for yep. the other shoe to drop with him. It has started to drop, and that usually means runs in his case there. So, um, listen, the Padres are in. Uh, the, the Cardinals can breathe a little bit easier. I think the Padres have to come out swinging and swinging big, much like they did yesterday. They got the Wainwright early in that game, and then, uh, you know, they let Clevenger handle it. Uh, I think the Padres do the same early here today. I'm going to back the Padres in the first five to get it done. There you go. And by the way, glutton for punishment. Sometimes you want to come back for more of that punishment. Next game up here, Seattle and Oakland quickly. I like the Oof. Mariners on the team total line again. Whenever I see my guy Caprillion on the mound, I like to try to take advantage of it, even though the Oakland Athletics sometimes pull him from the mound before the start, and I don't actually get the line up against him. 7.79 XFIP over the past 30 days. Low strikeouts, high walk rate, weighted on base percentage. The lefties, 401 to righties, a 373. Mm. Team total to FanDuel Sportsbook here for the Mariners. Listen at four. I'm going to take another shot here with the Mariners to see if they can get over that. Coming Oof. up next here, week Oof. three, NFL guessing game. Yeah, you don't want to miss this. Let's do it. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Boss, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game Four live, wins. prime oh, time. The the PGA In yes. game live, overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brentsy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Morning After. They have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season, the last time Indy won on the road in Jacksonville. Pretty much my point being, the AFC South stinks. The Jags are the only team with a win, and their updated win total is still just six and a half. It was the number before the year got underway. Let me take the over on Jacksonville. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Well, what do you know? The Bills go out there and embarrass the Titans. The number now is two and a half on Vegas. They're nearly a field yeah. goal road favorite against last year's number one seed in the AFC. And that's a Raiders team, again, that just blew a 20-0 halftime lead against the Arizona Cardinals. The Tennessee Titans right now look like they are being treated as one of the lower teams in the marketplace right now. Only on Sports Grid. Who 
cruising along in hour number two here on the early line. Sirius XM channel 159 right on the Sports Grid Network. Joe and Donnie here in the morning. It's time to talk some week three NFL action. One of my things I love to do midweek is say, Joe Ranieri, where will these lines end up? So let's start with the Thursday night game. 301, 302 on the rotation. Trubisky and Brissett. My goodness, two Hall of Fame possible possibility quarterbacks mm. matching up against each other. If we look at the lines right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook, opening line minus two and a half in the favor of the Cleveland Browns. It sits at four and a half today. It was actually five and a half yesterday. So my first question to you, Joe Ranieri, on the four and a half. Where do we wind up by kickoff on Thursday night football? I, listen, I the look ahead line on this, Donnie, was three. And now yeah. all of a sudden, what have we seen from, I'm sorry, both of these teams to warrant what? <laughs> uh, four and a half or five? Um, listen, it's kind of no man's land here. Obviously, anything over a field goal is a bit suspect. We know Tomlin's record as a dog. It's been absolutely money over the years in this particular spot. I do think the money comes down a little bit here, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. Four, four and a half, I, you know, it's, you're basically picking this game. Uh, if you're backing uh, Pittsburgh, you're going to take uh, the points. If you like uh, Cleveland, uh, I don't know what you're waiting for here uh, at this point, but I'd be very skeptical about uh, backing yeah. the Cleveland Browns laying that many points. And, and I think that's the, the trigger point of everybody looking at this game. Now, was, you know, at least in yep. game one where you saw Cleveland go on the road, they won. But a miraculous, you know, 58-59 yard field goal yep. by Cade York week number two. You probably were staring down the barrel of a double digit victory and a cover against the Jets only to let mm -hmm. that go up in smoke. I think the one also common denominator here is the Pittsburgh offense has been brutal in game one and game yes. two. We don't expect it to get any better, Joe, but you know what does help a little bit? No Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett questionable here with a neck injury. I mean, if you are a Pittsburgh yes. offense needing some breaks on your side, that could be it. If we look at the FanDuel Sportsbook mm -hmm. in the Steelers-Browns game, looking at the amount of tickets here, percentage of bets on the spread, Three out of every four tickets coming in here on the Steelers. Just about the same thing with the money on this side. So I think everybody, at least publicly, is looking at this the same way by just saying to themselves, hey, Joe, a little too many points here to trust the Cleveland Browns. Way too many. And keep in mind, too, uh, and this is another interesting thing, the Browns' defense is allowing an average of 17 points in the fourth quarter here, guys. Um, they, they're they kind of losing it towards the end of games, making it much closer than it needs to be. I, we know Brissett ain't going to light up anybody throwing the ball, which means this game is going to it's going to crawl, uh, Donnie. Crawl is what this game is going to be. And two teams that know each other really well, which has been dominated by, over the years, Pittsburgh. So, um, the whole line stinks here, Donnie. Very hard not to look at the Steelers and take the points. Maybe another Mike Tomlin special on the horizon. Now, mm -hmm. this next game is, you know, my counterpart here, Kevin Walsh, usually likes to say, let's get to the window on this one. Because I preface this okay. by talking about the Ravens and the New England Patriots. Nothing is really exciting about the Patriots offense coming into the season here, and they haven't shown anything through weeks one and weeks two to, you know, do any backsprings for at this point. But if we look at this game as a whole, I do have to say, it's interesting to see this line open up at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a minus three price, Joe Ranieri, and stay mm -hmm. at a minus three. If we look at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now, 90% of the bets coming in on the Ravens. That line isn't moving. So my question to you, will this line move to three and a half or higher, drop below three, or maybe no change at all? Because it looks like the public saying, let me get some of this minus three. It, it's uh, you're spot on, Donnie. It's a it's a uh, Joe's versus pros divide going yeah. on here. The public thinking this line is way too short. Uh, uh -huh. Hammer and Lamar Jackson and a bounce back, and yet it's not going anywhere. And if it hasn't gone yet, it ain't going. I, there would have to be such a over the top. Um, you know, public support of Baltimore here because the books know what's going to happen, Don. What happens if they go to three and a half? Uh, they're not going to give uh, the bigger betters, the sharper guys, the opportunity to be able to hit them like that. So I do think this is three. 
Uh, and then I do think um, we'll wait a couple of days and then we probably see this thing at two and a half before it's all said and done. It's fascinating. If this does go to two and a half, one of the more fascinating lines of the week, similar to what people looked at the New England yep. Patriots last year. What are you kidding me, Joe Ranieri? How the Patriots yep. favored over the Steelers? How'd that game wind up? Yep. If you got in early at the minus one and a half or two and a half, you cash that ticket in. Let's take a look at another football Boom. game, 471, 472, one o'clock on Sunday, the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes mm. 2 and 0 taking on the winless Indianapolis Colts in their own building. FanDuel opened up this line at a minus three and a half towards the Kansas City Chiefs. We're now seeing six and a half now across the board. It's one of those where you say to yourself, we've watched Indianapolis horrendous through three quarters and get lucky week one against the Texans, even to come away with a tie. And then also shut out on the road against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You're expecting a turnaround, but the betting public doesn't seem to feel that way, and maybe not even the pros, as this one is now close to seven. My question to you, do we actually reach seven at any time this week before kickoff? It's it's going to be uh, – listen, we know who the public uh, is going to like in this side, but the interesting Ooh. thing to me here, Donnie, is that we're not seeing – um, you know, we're not seeing that big push uh, from the early betters, the uh, the guys that actually uh, move yep. the line here. I do think there's going to be a lot of teaser action with Kansas City down to about a pick em, minus one somewhere in there. Uh, but it's very hard for people. Normally, I would look at the Colts here in, in a dog situation at home like this, Donnie, and hammer and be like, this is a gift, right? This is a terrible spot for Kansas City, and we're going to get the Colts at an amazing price. Yeah, but have anybody watched Matt Ryan in that offense yet? Yeah, they can't protect him. Uh, he looks slow to him, and it's just... Who's their best wide receiver right now? Paris Campbell? Um, because yeah. I don't Ashton know Doolin? how this offense gets any better. Because, listen, they're not going to let Jonathan Taylor carry this team again teams and defensive coordinators alike yeah not going to happen so this is a tough i don't love kansas city in here but i absolutely can't uh, can't back the Colts either uh but i do think this will get to uh kansas city seven at some particular point Starting linebacker for Kansas City, Willie Gay, suspended for this game. If there's any mm. chance that you need to get up off the mat on offense, you better do it in this game because Kansas City Ow. isn't yep. coming to town to run the football and beat you 14-13. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens there. Mm -hmm. Another interesting line, 473-474, the Vegas Raiders and the Tennessee Titans. The Vegas Raiders figured they had an easy win over the weekend, end up blowing a double-digit lead and, what, what 20 to nothing mm -hmm. lead over the Arizona Cardinals. We saw the Titans, well... We saw the Titans for a little bit here on Monday Night Football. Hey, look at that, 7-7. Seven, seven. They're in this game, 41-7 finals. They got their doors blown off. But this one opens up yep. as a favorite towards Vegas, a minus 2.5-point road favorite here for Vegas going up against the Titans, a 46.5 as a total. Now, me, I usually circle the wagons in this spot and go, I know everybody hates the Tennessee Titans, which is why I will start to build a case later in the week to bet on the Tennessee Titans, Joe Ranieri. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, listen, I, I don't think it will get to uh, to three, uh, guys. Yeah. Uh, but the home dog is absolutely uh, – I see this going to two before this ever hits uh, three. But this is another one of those absolute teaser plays right now people are grabbing with the Titans uh, – uh, Two and a half to eight and a half. This is going to be a, a big leg of uh, teasers this weekend, as it should be. I'll tell you what. Way. Yeah. You know what the interesting part about this game, too, Joe, is, you know, it used to be in the past when you had 16 games, you said you can't go 0-2 because yes. the season's over. Well, the extra game gives Great you a little point. bit of a reprieve, but both of these Great teams point. staring at 0-3s, somebody's got to win yep. this one because the loser, they're probably going home for good at this point in the NFL season. A lot right. more NFL talk coming up and also mixing in a little college football. Stick with us right here on the early line on the grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. 
it's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand. Survivor pools for the most part because pro football I don't today. With most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense in -game, in -game. In -game. I said it'll be a clear track me shootout Cap in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime one walk in nine Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? The game when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give them money. Smile. That was nice, you wanna give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. At the Elm Branch, David Gibbons, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of greatness. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do? I don't know. Are you tapping a different market? Are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your, your players for your team? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Josh Allen with a, another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network. Right back out here on the early line, Sirius XM Channel 159 on a Wednesday, talking some NFL action as we continue to guess where these lines will end up. Well, there's no guessing game here where Carson Wentz ended up. Certainly not on the Philadelphia Eagles. He's on the Washington huh, Commanders, whatever their name is at this point here. We'll see what happens. 475, 476, Philadelphia and Washington, Hurts and Wentz. Line opened up, Joe Ranieri, at three. Now sitting at the FanDuel Sportsbook at six and a half. Number one, do you agree with this line movement? And number two, do we see a full touchdown here? Well, it's um, it's coming, yes, because uh, after the Eagles uh, did what they did against uh, the Minnesota Vikings, which, by the way, was one of the uh, was one of the most uh, public dogs of the week there on Monday. And and, and people mm -hmm. bent him on a money line, which was cracking me up here. Uh, but yet, yeah, no. So now afterwards, you know what happens with the public, Donnie. Uh, this was a three, <laughs> like you said, look ahead. They watched the yeah. Eagles. They lost uh, backing Minnesota. So guess what's going to happen here? Uh, they're going to push the Eagles up to seven at some particular point. Uh, I don't know how long it'll last, but it will be at seven uh get ready for it here so we are going to have another opportunity to back a, a home dog here at a touchdown if you're uh if you're following along at home yeah and if you are following along at home and checking out the FanDuel Sportsbook right now you can click down on the stats underneath this game between the Eagles and the Commanders and find mm -hmm. out 
the Philadelphia Eagles will be in bed 82% of the time. Oh. Here we go. Let's see where this winds up. A favorite upon favorites upon favorites here. We'll see if the 2-0 Eagles can certainly do some damage here to the Commanders. We'll keep moving down the list. Now, this game might not like, get a lot of headlines for excitement and happenstance here. That's Houston and Chicago, 477-478. Mills versus Fields, two younger guys going at it. Now, yesterday, we had this line at 2.5, Joe Ranieri, as a favorite towards the home team, Chicago Bears. As it sits this morning at the FanDuel Sportsbook, a full three with a total that's coming in at 40 and a half. My question to you, will this line stay at three, increase, or go back to the two and a halves that we're showing early week here? I, yeah, listen, I mean, the two and a halves came. They, they did go to uh, three. I don't know that it, it's not going to three and a half. Uh, I think three is the right number, uh, Donnie, and I think we're probably going to uh, to get there by the time kickoff comes uh, because, what, on a neutral field, this is about a toss-up anyway, right? I do think um, the reason it went to three is I think a lot of people, uh, myself included, uh, considered mm -hmm. Houston at two and a half a fantastic teaser leg as well, pushing that up to, uh, to eight and a half, so... Um, I don't know that it'll get to three and a half. It shouldn't. I think three is the right number in this game. Yeah, you take a look at the Houston Texans. Should have won week one against the Colts here. Did not, but played very yep. well again against the Denver. Oh, I should say, yep. not very well, but in the game where they're still fighting. They had a lead in the fourth quarter against the Denver Broncos on the road before Russell Wilson threw a touchdown pass. So one to keep an eye on there. Just a matter of fact, if you think that the Bears should actually be a favorite to anybody, is probably the betting right. angle that you're going to take in that game. 481, 482, 425 kickoff game of the day, or so we thought. Heading into the season, my goodness, Tom Brady, all those weapons, Aaron Rodgers coming to town. We'll see what happens. And who would have thought that coming into this game, the Green Bay Packers would have the better wide receiving mm -hmm. core against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just because they have healthy bodies in the room. This line opened up at three and a half at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Now we're seeing it down to one and a half. So maybe a thought process behind there that says, could Green Bay turn out to be the favorite? Will this line rebound? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Joe, where does this line end up? Yeah, this is about right here, guys. Could actually be a little closer to a pick -em. Depending on the, the Mike Evans, uh, what we get yes. back uh, from that, because we know that. I think if Evans is available, you'll see this start to go back up. But uh, one thing is uh, for sure here, there is a uh, another sharp and square divide here. Uh, the public... Going to back Brady at home. However, uh, the pros in this spot, it's one and a half because of them. And even more so, Donnie, look at what that total has done uh, since it opened. 47 oh and a half down yeah. to 41 and a half, 42. Uh, and both teams are 2-0 to the under. So the total is really uh, where you're starting to see a bulk of the big money bettors uh, pushing this thing all the way down. So pick them maybe by uh, by uh, by kickoff there on Sunday. Wouldn't shock me. It is pretty crazy, though, when you take a look at two of the better quarterbacks of all time, lacing yep. them up in a game with two good football teams, and this total is going to be in the low 40s. That's a sign of the times here at that wide receiver position because yep. even though both of these quarterbacks can be accurate and move the football, we just might not see those splash plays that you anticipate that you will be getting if those mm -hmm. guys had a full complement of wide receivers. Another game, not all that exciting, but certainly intriguing because – who is, somebody has to win this game, as I like to say. 483-484 up in the Pacific Northwest, the Atlanta Falcons and the Seattle Seahawks. If we look at this game, the opening line, Seahawks at the FanDuel Sportsbook, a minus three and a half point favorite. That's now down to minus one and a half live with a total of 41 and a half. The Atlanta Falcons fought hard opening day. Probably should have won that football game against the Saints. Then they take that 3,000-mile plane ride out, and we're getting blown away by the Rams. And before you could turn your head, they had a chance to actually win that football game in the end. Again, with the the uh, uh, Seattle squad, first week there, when you're going up against it and say, hey, can we win this game against Russ? No shot, right? They pulled that game out, but they had a clunker in San Francisco. So we'll see how the Seahawks bounce back. But this line, Joe, where are we going here? Higher, lower? Atlanta can't be a favorite when it's all said and done, right? Couldn't believe it was two, two and a half at the open, uh, Donnie. I was <laughs> shocked here. I really yeah. was uh, shocked. And I get it, the 12th man, and the 
Think about this now. We've had eight quarters of Seattle football. They've only played yeah. two. Okay, that's it. And uh, <laughs> once once it came down to it, it the Geno Smith turned back into a pumpkin here, people. Um, and that's going to continue to happen. But listen, the Falcons aren't world beaters, but I will say this. Uh, what I have seen from Arthur Smith and uh, Marcus Mariota back in the starting position, mm -hmm. uh, the Falcons... They are playing. They are. They're not. They could have easily rolled over. And in the past, I think there were some Falcon teams that would have rolled over against the Rams there. But they didn't. They kept battling. They kept fighting. This is a scrappy group with some really good young targets. I think this continues to move towards the Falcons. So if you can get one and a half and tease it through three and seven guys and land at seven and a half, you better hurry up because I think this is going to continue uh, to get closer to a pick em price when it's all said and done. Yeah, I do. I agree with you there, too. And also, maybe it's not showing up in the wins and the losses, but, you know, it mm -hmm. takes some time to build a foundation. I think Arthur yes. Smith has the ear of that football team, and they're playing hard for him. So you do get some, you know, kudos for that. Yeah. 485, 486, the Rams and Arizona, the Cardinals here. Mm -hmm. Stafford versus Murray. If we're lining this game up, a minus four and a half opening number at the FanDuel Sportsbook. We now take a look at mm -hmm. three and a half, a total listed at 49 and a half. The Rams were very impressive through about three quarters. Quarters, then sort of collapse at the end. The Arizona Cardinals, the exact opposite. Horrendous to start the football game. Turned it on late and also in the overtime, getting that fumble return. So if we're looking at this line, is there a chance, Joe Ranieri, that we could see this at three? Or do you think the betting markets will adjust here for the Rams and increase that three and a half to four and beyond by the time they kick off? Absolutely. Another one of these, uh, you know, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Public uh, versus uh, the Sharps here because mm -hmm. this game, four and a half, we saw this. And the money kept coming in, on, or the tickets, rather, kept coming in on the Rams, right? Uh, especially after the ridiculousness yep. that Arizona had to come back and beat. But um, this went from four and a half to four to three and a half, uh, Donnie. And it's not because the public... Uh, is enamored with Arizona. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, this is because there is a value as a home dog for Arizona, and they finally put it together there last week. Didn't quit on uh, Kingsbury. So I, I do think, the uh, to me, it's, it's Cardinals in this one. I, it ain't going to get less than three, but I do think Cardinals plus three is what the line is going to be when it's all said and done. Yeah, it's a fascinating game to try to break down because most people say, oh, Arizona, not a very good football team. Wait till they you know, are not injured yep. here. You're just going to take the Rams. But we've seen this happen and play out before. Sunday night football, San Francisco and Denver. Healthy is Russell Wilson. It doesn't matter. The San Francisco 49ers are the favorite now in this ball game at a minus one and a half. If we take a look at the FanDuel Sportsbook here, 72% of the bets coming in on the San Francisco 49ers. Who would have thought you lose your, your starting quarterback, Joe Ranieri, and all of a sudden you're a darling of the betting markets? Doesn't happen that much, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's taking place here. A total also of 44 and a half. Does Denver recapture being a favorite, or is this just San Francisco right up till game time for you, Joe? Well, you don't open up as a uh, as a home uh, favorite, and then uh, now you're looking up and you're like, "Whoa, what's going on here? I'm almost a dog in this thing." Wait, I am a dog in many aspects. Yeah, that doesn't happen because the public is betting you, uh, my friends, on a Tuesday. It happens uh, because nobody trusts Russell Wilson and Hackett. Uh, and, of course, we saw what Jimmy G did, uh, right, in that game against Seattle. Mm -hmm. We saw what he means to this team. Uh, if there was any questions about whether or not uh, that locker room would follow, uh, the answer is, yeah, uh, it's Jimmy G's uh, team again. Uh, but, the again, this is one of those games where maybe the biggest shock to me is how much money is coming in on the under. Uh, the total continues to get pounced down here, uh, guys, and with good reason, right? Primetime under is now, Donnie, I believe 6-0 and to start the season. Both of these teams, 2-0 uh, and to the under. So points are going to be at a premium in this one, but just don't think Hackett's going to score them. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we'll call a timeout. Maybe a couple uh, missed uh, advantages here. Coming up next, college football. Boom.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand. And survivor pools for the most part because pro football I today. It most important player despite not being quarter focus of it and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense half in game, in game. I said it'll be a pure access. track me shootout cap in game I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kyler Murray but I am cheering for him in the second half in game live oh, overtime one walk in 9Ks and I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? I in when they were football you know, full circle. Plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get the million. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give them money. Smile. That was nice. Want to give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. And Elon Branch, David Gibbons, Tom Brady makes great players. And Cole Beasley, who's a pretty good player in the NFL with Dallas and with Buffalo, is now on the verge of great. Is this really something that serious sports bettors want to do? I don't know. Are you tapping a different market? Are you maybe tapping a market that's more fantasy inclined when you're going out and you're picking your, your players for your team? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Josh Allen with another great game in fantasy football. Four touchdowns, over 300 yards, but less running, which is really interesting. The James Cook production all came in garbage time, I think, uh, 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 until the fourth quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, he had four rushes for three yards. Although, if you are looking for a positive signal here, he did get his first rush before Zach Moss got his first rush. The Sports Grid Network. had some fun in the last segment there interrogating Joe Ranieri on where he thought some of these lines would end up in the NFL but the bright spotlight is still on Joe Ranieri because there are a lot of questions that we need answered in college football this weekend and we're going to start Joe with the number one football team in the land those Georgia Bulldogs they're going to be taking on Kent State Kent State is from the Mac Kent State likes to go fast the Georgia Bulldogs have a wildly talented defense. First three games of the season, Oregon scored three points. Sanford, they didn't even score. And how about South Carolina putting up that mighty effort of seven points? So the where will start on this game in a heavy favorite for Georgia at minus 45 and a half, a total of 61 and a half. But the question is, do you see a touchdown from the flashes this weekend? I just want to know, like, who did Kent State uh, piss off here, Donnie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, have you seen this non, non-conference yeah. schedule now? And it yeah. culminates. You've already uh, played Washington, uh, Oklahoma, and and now you're going to end up in Georgia? Um, my goodness. I don't know who you guys made mad. But, uh, I listen, those three games will probably – create enough money that Kent State's football program will be around for a little while because these poor <laughs> kids, my goodness. Uh, the answer to your question of will they score a touchdown and uh, will be if Georgia wants them to. Uh, that's yeah. going to be the answer here because uh, there's nothing that Kent State's going to bring to the table uh, that's going to allow them 
uh, to this game is going to be so one-sided for a little while. Mostly Kent State likes to play up-tempo, too. So what are you going to do? You're going to go three and out and have your defense on the field? Well, the good news is it'll be three and out for the defense, too, because that's all it'll take Georgia to score here in this one. Uh, it is going to be ugly. Touchdown late, maybe, uh, but it's going to have to come from the, you know, the third and fourth stringers from uh, from Georgia here. But kudos to Kent State. I, you know, they're a team, once MAC play starts to come in here, you know, who's going to be better prepared for the competition in MAC after getting crushed by those three? Yeah, no, it's a good point you bring up because there's two ways you can look at that, too. It's like, okay, they're, they're battle-tested here, but on the other side, it's like, did we get injured and use up a lot of energy in these three games we had no shots? And, you know, some of the old football yep. adages that you hear your coaches tell you, gentlemen, this is a measuring stick game for you. That measuring stick has been broken oh, a few so weeks ago. So go out there, Ooh. have some fun, see if you can relax, and we'll see mm -hmm. if we can get some touchdowns or a – or how about this? Just score some points here in this game for Kent State. We'll find that out and see if it happens. Another team that's been running teams up the flagpole, and you talk about Kent State. What is your AD doing to you right now? Well, if you look at Michigan, you're mm -hmm. the coaching staff going, well, can you at least give us a game at this point? Michigan's opening game against Colorado State, 51-7. to Game number two, Hawaii, 56-10. to mm -hmm. Game number three, UConn. 59 to nothing. I don't, to be honest with you, can you, are they the three worst teams in the mm -hmm. country that somehow you got lined up like five years in advance to play? It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. But the question is here, all these 50 point outputs here by Michigan, does the buck stop here this weekend against the Terrapins mm -hmm. in Maryland? Uh, listen, Maryland has done an amazing job. And let's not forget the end of the year too, Donnie, last year, last season, yeah. Scoring, I think, close to 100 points in the last two games. And yeah. now they've come here and, uh, you know, Loxley's done we an know. amazing job with this team. Yeah. And, and they can score points with the best of them. However, yeah, um, the defenses that you have faced to this particular point are not uh, what they are about to face yeah. here uh, with uh, with Michigan. I, I think this is going to be an extremely – I think they're going to compete – but I think ultimately what's going to happen is Michigan's going to keep scoring. And Maryland is going to score, but they ain't going to score enough to be able to keep this thing close or within the 16 and a half, 17 points that it is. So can they get to 50? No, they can't. Uh, Michigan can, but not, uh, not Maryland. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one to watch you play, at least for the season for Michigan, because mm -hmm. usually it's three yards in a cloud of dust. With Harbaugh telling yep. me he loves to have a fullback with his hand in the dirt, like an old Bo Schembechler quote. But they've scored four, three points 50 times, which that doesn't happen. Quite frankly, I don't think it's ever happened at Michigan over the first three games. We'll see if they can keep that extension going. Right. But there are some games. We don't have those top billing games, one versus two, two versus three. But you do have right. an interesting one setting up here, and that's between Clemson and Wake Forest. Who would ever figure this? And I think I saw something where this game, these two teams haven't met ranked in since like 1950. I mean, something ridiculously long ago, which is not really Clemson's issue. It's basically like Forrest's issue because they're not ranked all that much. But Sam Hartman coming back much sooner than maybe some of the experts thought. We actually thought Sam Hartman might not even be back for the entire season when we got that news about a week, week and a half before week zero came into play. But if we look at this line, Seven and a half. It's showing Wake Forest a lot of respect here. A total of 55 and a half. Give me some thoughts on this. Can Sam Hartman, it feels like the seventh year redshirt senior, pull up the upset here over Clemson at home? Um, Probably not, but it's not. I think the bigger story here is going to be at some point, and it could very well be this weekend, Clemson has a quarterback problem. Um, and that is not going to go away, and it's going to rear its head. And if you guys don't know, there is a five-star freshman sitting behind uh, DJ right now that can mm -hmm. – it's like Trevor Lawrence reincarnated, uh, guys. Uh, Klubnik <laughs> is the kid's name. And, there are, and the problem is they're going to need to pass the ball when they start playing some of the better competition, right? And that's not yes. what DJ does really, really well. You know, he's a big kid. Think, you know, Cam Newton, he can run you over. He can do those types of things, run that kind of power offense. But this kid, Klubing, is what you're going to need in order to beat, I don't know, a team like, let's say, Wake Forest with Sam Hartman, who's going to, you know, they can get up 21 to 7 somewhere or 17 to 7, something like that, right? 
how exactly are you going to come back against some of the better offensive teams? So while I think the defense of Clemson will hand a Wake Forest defense is always suspect, um, they will have some success. But I, I think the the rumors and the finger point, it's it, the the shouts for Klobnik to be the starter. It starts this weekend, man. I mean, how, how many points did they put up against Liberty? Um, what was that? Yeah, there's going to be an offensive problem here for Clemson. But they have the answer. They just got to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, very good defense there for Clemson. And you're right about that. You sort of get that, you know, lulled to sleep by Clemson because they don't play in the SEC. They play in the ACC. So, theoretically, Dabo Sweeney going, what do you mean? We're like, we're unbeaten. We're scoring 40 points a game, even though it was Georgia Tech, Furman, and Louisiana Tech at this point. Sooner or later, you're going to face some adversity where you're down in the second half and you can't just say, well, or defense will get a pick six, or we'll block a punt, or yes. I'll just hand the football exactly. off, and it's a 75-yard touchdown run. Yep. So we'll see if that comes up a little bit sooner than later. But I do agree with you. You need to step up because let's forget about even the regular season, Joe, right? You get to the playoffs. You ain't facing Georgia and saying, like, hey, well, if we can score two touchdowns, we'll be in this thing. No, <clears> that's not the case. You're going to have to hit the gas pedal <clears> in order to beat those really good and quality football teams. So I'm hitting the gas pedal. On offense, Tennessee hitting on a lot of cylinders here. A double-digit favorite here in Tennessee versus the Gators. Warranted or not, Joe Ranieri coming up this weekend? Uh, well, didn't Anthony Richardson already win the Heisman? Um, I thought he, that, yes, he, did. he already, already drafted. Done. Oh, yeah. okay. After one, right? Okay, good. That's good <laughs> yeah. stuff there. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna wait. You know, here we go. It turns out that maybe Dan Mullen wasn't as crazy as everyone wanted him out the seam after that Utah game. Uh, the reality is, uh, guys, Florida is very disjointed right now, and that is to be expected. This isn't Billy Napier's team. It's not going to be it for another year or so. He's, he's got to get some recruiting under his belt. Richardson has all the talent in the world, but so what? Um, we saw his biggest issue, right? His ability to consistently be able to deliver the ball in the passing game, which he didn't. Uh, they almost lost to South Florida, uh, you know, in that last game. In the meantime, let's talk about offense. Uh, Tennessee, Josh Heupel here, number four in scoring in the country. Mm -hmm. This is a Tennessee team that is going to put points on this Florida defense. And by the way, you're not in a swamp anymore. Uh, you're going to Tennessee. And my problem is, how does Florida come back with a guy that uh, has already proven time and time again he's not the most consistent passer in the world? Tennessee's going to run up and down that field. They're very good at scoring and converting. Florida is not. This is a terrible game for Florida. Terrible spot. Yeah, we'll see what happens here in the SEC. But my goodness, if you're looking towards Tennessee and say they're going to have a pretty good year, just look at that schedule. Like, even if they can get yep. to eight or nine wins, it would be miraculous because of that gauntlet that they're forced to run through each and every year being in that division in the SEC. Now, another SEC team that we're going to talk about, and we're say another MAC team. Boy, MAC loves to go on the road and take on SEC opponents, which is crazy, but yep. play them anytime, anywhere. Give us that paycheck, and we'll be just fine with that. The reason I bring this game up is Kentucky is a 25 and a half point favorite over NIU one of the better teams here in the Mac a total listed at yes. 52 and a half from a better perspective we love to look at these games because on its outset Kentucky should roll NIU but Kentucky's got a ranked opponent on deck here is this one of those games where you yep. say if I'm betting Kentucky it better be in the first half because in that second half let's not get anybody injured because we got to get back to SEC play the following week Joe I love what Stokes has done with that program. Uh, I think that was a great win on the road against Florida. Mm -hmm. But you are right, my friend. This has got trap game written all over it uh, for them. They need to be careful here, uh, Kentucky. And you're right, first half or not for me because they might uh, get caught looking ahead. They start believing in the hype a little bit here, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a problem. So, yes, uh, trappish feels very trappish to me here with uh with the wildcats let's have some fun in the heisman trophy market here and it mm. seems like there is the big three it's cj stroud it's caleb williams and it's bryce young a priced here at the fandle sportsbook cj stroud at a plus 200 caleb williams at a plus 300 and bryce young at a plus 500 so the question is it's Caleb Williams. Where does he factor in here? But quite frankly, he's playing an Oregon State team with a total listed at 71 this weekend. And they are a heavy favorite in that game. Actually, touchdown favorite, not as heavy as yep. you would like them to see. But let's just say they shoot it out for an average of 35 apiece, which means Caleb Williams probably putting up monster numbers. By the end of this weekend, 
Could we see a dollar change and Caleb Williams be the favorite in the clubhouse to win the Heisman here at the FanDuel Sportsbook? You better hurry up here, guys. It's amazing to me, too. People kept expecting um, USC to, to fall off a cliff here. Like yes. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley and this yeah. USC offense will drop a hundred on you, no problem. And Caleb Williams looks. <laughs> I mean, what is he a sophomore? I mean, look at this kid, man. He looks more comfortable in this uh, in this uh, in this system with Lincoln Riley than any of the guys in the past, including Kyler Murray and company here that actually did win the Heisman for Lincoln Riley. Uh, Caleb Williams is a monster. The fact that he's uh, not the number one choice right now, guys. The value is there because I think when it's all said and done, the numbers he is going to put up at USC with those wide receivers in the Pac-12, gaudy, absolutely gaudy. Going to be very hard not to bet uh, Caleb Williams as your Heisman winner. And I agree with you there, too, because let's also keep in mind the point I always like to beat home is this doesn't this word doesn't get handed out after the national championship game. Exactly. It's handed out after the regular season. So you're not going to have to face, you know, Alabama – or another couple yep. tough teams there from the SEC or just to get by at Clemson, let's just say that. So we'll see how that plays out again. Yep. Stetson Bennett, 12 to 1. Dylan Gabriel, 16 to 1. Ooh. JJ McCarthy, 30 to 1. College football, NFL, Major League Baseball. We covered it all this morning. And as always, every Wednesday morning, I want to thank Joe Ranieri for being a true professional, waking up and giving the people what they need. So thanks, Joe Ranieri. And as I like to say, get some rest here. Get some rest here. One of the hardest workers on the network. I'll be right back for a nice little episode of Listen Up. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decisions. Boy, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live oh, prime yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters. Because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on SportsGrid. The early line. You look at the pick for Garrett Wilson. Okay, you know, big guy coming from a big program. Got to step up here. Oh, no, he's going to take a downgrade because maybe his quarterback isn't as good. That's an unbelievable performance. And also, let's take a look at the pressures that he had. Going back to the state of Ohio where he's got some legendary status there. Eight for 102 and two scores in a monster comeback, which he was a big part of here. And also, take a look at Chris Olave. Where is he going to fit in? You're right. He's supposed to be that third wheel option. Learn under the other two. Vets. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Riccardo into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Anatomy of the Amazon Prime Thursday night deal that everybody is up in arms of. Well, clearly not the NFL. A multi-billion dollar 11-year deal, about a billion a year. Those are found dollars that nobody expected. What about the consumer? A lot of articles about how hard it is to find, but that was expected in the marketing plan. Remember, there are about 172 million current subscribers for Amazon and Amazon Prime in the U.S., about 200 million globally. That's a big number, but they want more. And at $15 a month, they're going to try as much as they can to get more. The plan is this. Try to find the games on Thursday night. Get upset because it's not there. Find out how to get it and then realize that it's really not that expensive 
relative to everything else you get, and the subscriptions continue to go up. That's what Amazon bets on. Segment of the day right here for the early line for Wednesday. Joe Ranieri, Donnie Wright side here, bringing that heat from 7 to 9 a.m. Before we hand it over to Ben Stevens and the morning after and the rest of your sports grid programming throughout the day. We talked a lot of stuff today. Major League Baseball with a full card today. A lot of teams still jockeying for playoff position and, quite frankly, still trying to make it into wild card position. We talked some college football here, had a little fun there. NFL lines and where they're going to end up. But, quite frankly, I still want to talk some more football. And we're going to hit the SEC and college football expansion. Listen up. All right, the SEC, what are we talking about here? Are they saying they don't want an expanded playoff because they get two teams every single year and they've won, what, 12 out of the last 16 national championships? But I got to tell you, Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC, he is hitting the nail right on the head here. Wants to make sure this playoff comes through so we can have more of a national product, not just a Southeastern Conference product, which they're still going to win their fair share of national championships. But the one, you know, saying I guess he had or quote that he said was we got to make sure that people are still tuning in in November. And he's 1000 percent correct. All the people after that said we don't need an expansion because the SEC is so dominant. You wouldn't say that with the NCAA field of 64 in March Madness. Why are we letting these little conferences in? Because that's what makes the tournament great and upsets that you can see happen. Even if a number one beats a 16 every 30 years, it can still happen at that point. But also to the other point that's being made in this, where the regular season would be rendered useless if you expand the playoff. Guys, it's the exact opposite. In the NFL, when the Kansas City Chiefs, if they lose game one, their season isn't over. You're cheering them on all the way through, hoping they can make it into the playoffs. You don't have one winner from the NFC and one in the AFC, and that's all you get for the Super Bowl. You have the playoffs. Each and every game is important right up to the end where teams are fighting to make it into the playoffs. It's the way it's supposed to be done, and good on the SEC for seeing it that way. Now stay tuned here right here on the Sports Grid Network for Ben Steep and the morning after.